Comparative mythology is a major aspect of this channel. Finding those connections between the different cultural interpretations of the gods and monsters, angels and demons, I think is, is vitally important to try to obtain some sort of truth, if you will, to try to find what's really going on, not what we want to be true. Uh, and even if we don't find that, that deep down, innate truth it's the journey it's the it's the search that stimulates me well recently an individual had written in one of my videos that that satan and shiva are not the same thing and my response to that person was yes you're right they're not the same and also this individual wrote that Satan is the adversary to the Abrahamic God, Yahweh, let's call him Yahweh, where Shiva is not the adversary to Brahma, the creator. And that's very much true. Now, this got me to think Okay, what, why is it do we here in the West utilize Satan as the preeminent entity, if you will, on the left-hand path? And in the East, it tends to be Shiva. I find it fascinating from a cultural perspective that we here need to utilize the adversary while they in the East don't. And the reason for this is Christianity is, the, is at the foundation of Western civilization. A culture's framework is built upon what they believe on a spiritual level. And as they say, Western civilization was, was, its foundations are based on two different cities, Athens in the sense of democracy, and Jerusalem with the Judeo-Christian traditions. And at a deeper spiritual level, deeper than the political, much deeper than the political, is the spiritual. So Christianity is ingrained. It's, it's codes and ethics. It, it's, it's, it is the foundation of Western civilization. Now, I know a lot of people don't like hearing that, but it is a fact. Now for us here in the West to be, let's say, heterodox or antinomian or however you want to phrase it, to take that first step on the path, I think it is important to, to take that step with Satan. Especially if you were raised religious. You have to let that go. You have to let the dualistic thinking that's so ingrained here in the West, the good, the bad, you know, the good God, the bad God, the Uhura Mazda, the Araman, the, 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 the Jesus Satan. You have to let that dualistic thinking go. That's why Satan is so important here in the West, where in the East, their overall perception 
of the gods. The gods are all aspects of the single god, or, or more than a god. Consciousness itself, Brahman. Brahman is consciousness, it is reality. And everything, all the gods, are simple reflections of this greater God. They don't have to divorce themselves from their supreme being. Brahman is a concept. It's not so much a being. They don't want to divorce themselves from that concept. They want a shortcut to divinity. See? And in a sense, we're doing that also here in the West, but utilizing different means, of course. They, they dare to venture out onto the edge, and in some case, go over it as a shortcut to the divine, the divine aspect of the self, finding the God in them and elevating that God in them. So, getting back to the initial point, yes, this person is correct. Satan and Shiva are not the same thing. The only similarities they really have is through Shiva stems from a horn god called Pashupati. Okay. Now, Pashupati, in a sense, became Shiva. What happened here in the West is Satan, which was a faceless being in the Bible, had no physical qualities, took on the face or the persona, the mask, that is, of the horn god of Western European paganism. That could be Pan, Krenanos, Faunus, so on and so forth. So both have a horn god connection. So yes, my friend, whoever you are who wrote that, they are not the same. but both can get you to the same destination on the left-hand path.